Hello everyone. I hope you are doing well. I am Anisha Mish, core member of Intersight, a data center product of Cisco. I'm working on developing Terraform provider for Intersight. This workshop is about Terraform providers. The flow will be something like this. First, we will discuss what and why Terraform. Second, we will briefly discuss about configuration files. Then we will interesting develop a provider from scratch. After this hands-on, I'll provide you with some resources and links for your reference. And lastly, we'll have the question and answer sessions. For developing a provider, let look. Let us look at. If you have a basic knowledge on GoLand and you know what is an API, we are good to go. However, if you are already familiar with Terraform or used any of the published Terraform providers, then that will be a plus. Yes, so these are the only requirements for developing a provider. You might have a question that why we are using GoLand. Basically, Terraform is a tool provided by HashiCorp and that company has provided us with Terraform libraries. Those are written in Go. So writing provider is much easier in Go. As of today, those libraries are not available for other languages, but you are free to write the Terraform providers in any other language. Let's get started then. Suppose you have a virtual private cloud and you created a user group on day one. On day two, you designed some profiles and brought in some servers. With every passing day, the complexity will increase. As the complexity of this graph increases, maintenance stress will also increase. On day N, you might want to add some new features. Handling a complicated infrastructure can be a challenge when done manually or when there is no way I can monitor all the objects created in one go. This is where Terraform comes into picture. Terraform is a tool by HashiCorp, which is used for provisioning your application. Now provisioning means to provide the users the capabilities of your application to play around and design their infrastructure. The first problem statement is implementing the design of your desired infrastructure. The second problem statement will be how to make room for changes, allowing it to evolve, including new features or removing some existing settings. Basically, it is a tool for building, changing and versioning infrastructure safely and efficiently. Okay, those were some heavy weight words. Let me break it down for you. Terraform is basically a giant state machine. It sits in front of the API layer, allowing users to manage the applications, objects in, mo in more thorough way through a configuration file. Hence, Terraform is basically responsible for marshalling or unmarshalling of response and requests for the API by taking data for the request from the configuration files provided by the user. For example, I have a smart house. Through a controller, I can control the light, color, and brightness of my hall lighting system. If the controller gets a Terraform provider, the configuration file would look something like this. The provider section uses an IP and a token to establish a connection between Terraform and the controller. Then two resource blocks will be created, which will be creating two objects of the type hall lighting. One is named night and the other is named party. At this moment, party is enabled as true. Later on, I can modify this file by setting the party objects enable property as false and I can sleep peacefully. Basically, I, I reuse the parameters and values in the configuration file to recreate requests 
and allow the API to perform CRUD operations. All these configurations are captured into a file called Terraform configuration file and the language that is used to use this, write this file is called HCL, that is HashiCorp configuration language. You might be running into a confusion as to what is the difference between Terraform and a Terraform provider. We will buzz that now. A provider is a plugin to your application. While Terraform is the tool that understands this plugin, it picks up the contents from the configuration file, feeds it to the provider, and also directs the provider as to what is to be done in sequence among the various operations available like create, read, update, and delete. So we are done with the theory here. Let's quickly have a look at the software requirements before developing a provider. As mentioned earlier, we will require Golang. We will be working on version 1.13.x. You should have downloaded and installed Terraform. For this session, we will need a dummy application which will provide us an API and we will be developing a Terraform provider for that dummy application. So what is the way then? Let's develop a provider. First of all, we will go through the application which we are calling here as a dummy application. We'll simply go through what are the objects that application has to provide. So here you can see I have a dummy server client. Inside this API folder, I have client and server. Inside client, there is a file client.go, which provides me options to create connections with this application and make queries like get all, get item, or create a new item using new item, update, and delete. So basically, it has covered all the CRUD operations. This is the file we will need while creating the Terraform provider. Let's have a look on the server also as to what objects are we going to create. This application supports only one object for now, that is item.go. Inside this, we have a struct item and the property is a name, description and tag. So our provider will be creating objects for this struct. Now, let's move on to writing code for provider. I'll quickly start with creation of a project. Here I have Golang. I'll create a new project, say Terraform Provider App. Now, Terraform is a very uh, a, a tool that is very strict about naming conventions. Hence, the project name that I have used here is Terraform Provider App, considering that app is the application name. The first file that we will be creating is main.go. Now, the library that I had mentioned while the presentation that Hashiko provides us with a library using which we can create Terraform providers is basically this one, github.com Hashicop. Terraform plugin SDK. We have the main function inside which we are creating a plugin serve which will provide the provider. Now, what is the use of this function is when I have built this entire project, I know that the main function will be called. Now, this provider has all the required functions for performing CRUD for that particular object, that is, items in our case. Now, we'll deep dive into what the code would be like. 
for that we first have to create a directory with the name app because that is the application name now terraform conventions this directory name has to be the application name in our case it's app let's move inside inside that we will have a file that will be named provider.go now provider.go will provide us the schema that is required for the provider to create a connection with the application so in my case the application requires a host name port and token looking at the host name first i have defined here that the type of host name is string and it is a required parameter and the description is a optional part but it is recommended that you add it so here the description is endpoint host another uh, key that i'll be adding here is default func here that will be schema dot default func uh, is uh, an optional parameter though what it will do is i'll just quickly show you here here this is default func key is used to define a environment variable now why is this required is yes, suppose i have a configuration file where i have not mentioned the host name so there it will search for the environment variables with the mention with the name that we have mentioned here and try to pull value from there so it will be of schema env default func type moving back to here i will add the same default func schema dot environment variable in my case i am adding it as app host name and the default value for this variable will be empty string similarly i have port here it is of type int and i will add the same environment variable here as well but the name of the variable will be now app port now the that is token for token or it is a and the environment variable is app token next is configure function so we have got these parameters to maintain a connection but how who will create this connection that creation uh, that connection is created by the function that is passed here that is configure provider if we go to the declaration here we see that this function receives value that is resource data now in this entire provider wherever we see resource data means it is the data that is provided by the user so this function takes user data and returns an interface why is it a interface because it's a user defined object that we are returning here and it is of type client now resource data is kind of a map uh, map or a dictionary you can call in terms of then that is it's a value pair so using the get function i'm getting the host name key and assigning its value to host name now whatever data that is given by this particular function is actually a interface so i'm type casting it to the corresponding value that i need it in here host name is to be in string port is to be in int while token has to be in string and i'm creating a client using the function new client and passing the parameters provided by the user so we are done with establishing a connection next what to do we have to create or read or update or delete objects now whatever is uh, created by terraform can be managed by terraform suppose there are already existing objects those will you will not be able to manage through terraform as of now but in future there are plans to expand it now each object that we are creating into an application is called a resource in our case the object is item now inside the app folder i have to create a file which will have a prefix resource and will continue with the object name so the file name will be resource_item.go 
here i have a function resource item which will return the entire resource now what will be the ingredients of this resource i want my resource to be created updated read read and deleted we will define this functions later on first we will look at the schema of the resource that is what are the parameters that are required to create this object as we had seen earlier in the climb.go that our item is of has three properties that is name description and tag they are of type string string and array of strings respectively so we have to mimic this entire structure into a terraform schema how to do that here the schema key will be expecting a map string schema of schema the uh, key of this uh, map would be the name that we are expecting the user to enter and give value so first will be name it is of type string required yes now i will add one more key that is force new meaning if the name property is changed delete the original object and create a new original new object so i have added force new next property is description which is of type string and optional now inside any of a key value pair you have to mention one of these two either required or optional since we have mentioned required here we have ignored optional and since the name indicates we cannot have required and optional both as true in a single key value here optional is true now tags as we remember was a array of strings now how to represent that it is of type set here what are the other options that we have type list is also suitable but i have used set here to prevent duplicate values inside the array and using the lm key i will define the data type for each element inside the set that is string so we have defined the schema now let's jump on to creating an item so i uh, here i have defined a function named resource item create which i have mapped to for into the create uh, key while i was creating this entire resource so whenever the create part is called this particular function will be called now as i had told you earlier resource data means user input so all the data that user has given us to create this resource we will be able to access it through this variable now what is meta meta is a action object that we had created in the provider.go here we had created this connection and we had returned the interface now this interface has reached us here this is one of the parameters so first to create i'll have to typecast the connection into a client that i'll do as api client and i'll take meta and i'll typecast it to client dot client now let's collect user data first of all i'll do is if the resource data type gives me a function that is get okay meaning if user has given name check whether he has given a valid input or not if he has a valid input proceed further so we will have the uh, the value that is given by the user and okay will store true or false as to whether that exists or not in the configuration file so uh, if the data is there i'll go ahead and add it uh, to one step i forgot is to you have to create a object of the item that is client dot item now 
I'll assign value to these to this object. So name will be Lee. Again, remember data dot get okay actually provided as an interface. So I'll have to typecast it to string. Similarly, we'll do for description as well. Now comes the tricky part that is array of strings data on get okay I'll see whether tags are there or not because tags were optional properties so it depends on user whether he wants to give it or not if they are there what I'll do is I'll take it I'll first typecast it to set second just refer to what I had written earlier okay I'll just copy this code from here what I have done here is I got the data from user I've typecasted it to a set and then from the set I'm creating a list so I have the value given by users but since it's of type list and list is again a object that Terraform schema provides us I wanted something in the native data type of Gola that is array of strings now how to do that I first created a array of strings of length of tags that user had given and then I appended it after typecasting it okay so now we have the item object let's move on on creating that how I will do is I'll use the connection that I already have and I'll call the function new item and pass it my item now if I go to the declaration of new item I see that it returns an error so what I'll do is I'll create a array object here and I'll check if it is null now terraform provider has a flaw we'll quickly look into that now one thing that is very important here is setting data dot set id and the id in our case is name since we have kept it unique by putting in the tag force new so i'll quickly put it item dot name now what happens here is even if i do not do this error handling and i set id terraform believes that i have created the object this is a flaw here so you have to be very careful while creating a provider that you always have error handling in place now I have set, created the object I have checked whether it's created or not using my error object I have set the ID now what this function should return error now what I will do here is I will return nil because if it has reached this point means there were no errors had been with errors it would have directly returned the error so here we are done with the create part I will now instead of writing the entire function I'll quickly get it from a pre-written place and then we will go step by step through the entire process next is read read function is the same it takes two parameters data and interface as discussed earlier m is the meta that is it stores the data of the connection now d since we are reading an object we know that it 
would already have an ID. So we will use the client connection and fetch that object from the application. And we will check that if it has any error or not. If it has any error, we will simply return the error. Next, what we'll do is, we will now create a map using the object properties. So how that will be done is d.set give the key as name and give the value as item.name. What we are doing here is we are fetching the data from the application and saving it locally. So that is what read is, correct? So we will do the same for descriptions and tags. Tags are since of string array type in the response, we would have got it at the same format that is why here no typecasting is required. Now this function will return nil because there are no errors here. So read part is complete. Here we are done with create and read. Let's go to update now, which will be very much similar to the create part. What we have done here is again, we have created the connection. We are fetching the data, first of all, at tag because we have to typecast it as we had seen the case in create function. And then we are creating an item of all the values that we have fetched from the configuration files. There is one more interesting function here that is d dot has change. This function, what it does is it will return a Boolean, so true or false, if there was a change for this particular property. So you don't have to do this d dot get every time. Instead, you can put a check that if it has changed, then update it. Otherwise, leave it. So we have created an item object successfully and we will call the update item function from the client and pass in the modified object. Again, we will do the error check and return nil. The final part that is delete is uh, we, uh, the data that uh, we want to delete. We will first capture its ID in item ID and then we will simply pass it to delete item, the name of the item that we want to delete. So delete is just as simple. Now let's see what is the error here we see that the function names are different i'll just update it quickly so finally we have an entire resource that performs CRUD operations. Now, where, who will call this function? Obviously, the provider will have to call, but how will it know? We will have to add it into provider.go. Inside schema, we skipped one key, this resources map. What this will have is, it will have a map string of schema resources. And here, the first section that is the prefix of the name that we are going to give will have to be the provider's name that is or the application's name that is app here followed by the object that we are going to create that is item now app item will call the function the source item now where are we going to use this app item we will see it when we are creating the configuration files so we have this part ready and main.go quickly import. Okay, it's added here now. So recap of what we have done till now. First, we created the main go file, which has a provide funky and we are providing app.provider, which actually leads it to this function. This function will have entire provider schema along with the connection and the resource map. Here, we will be having multiple resources provided we are uh, creating multiple different type of objects. Since we have only one object in our application, so we have just one 
element into this map that is app item and this will call resource item resource item has all the functions that are required and all the codes that is required to perform the CRUD so we are done here actually so these are the main three files that are required to create a provider having for an application that has only one object one thing that i had skipped here are is the creation of go mod file which is a mod file with all the dependency of third party libraries that we have for this project that is just one that is hashicorp terraform plugin sdk the library provided by hashicorp and that's it and using this go mod file i have created a vendor now how to create this plugin simple just build this project now the provider's name should also have a prefix that is terraform provider followed by the application name so i'll do go build o terraform provider app since that is our application name quickly see what is going on here it says no file code lucid okay pardon me for a moment Once the provider is created, what we will have to do is create the Terraform configuration file. Now, in that configuration file, we'll be giving the details that use actually. Okay. So, and Anisha, I'm sorry to break in. I just wanted to let you know you have about five more minutes because um, our next step session is going to start at 310, uh, but we want to have the um, to have the speakers to set up, but um, don't no need to rush. I just want to let you know uh, about how much longer you have before it's time to field questions. Sure. So after ten minutes, we can take up questions, right? Mm -hmm. Sure. So I'll um, quickly show you what is going on. Now, once the provider is ready, what we will be doing is we'll create a TF file. Okay, something seems like it's stuck. Okay, what I'll do is I simply go and create a new file here. Suppose this is main.tf. Okay, now all the Terraform configuration files should have dot dot tf uh, extension how to write a terraform configuration file first we will use the provider keyword and then the name of the provider that is app and inside that our provider required three parameters that is host okay we don't need this uh, double code here. we can simply give and localhost next property that we required was port and it was of integer type so it will be 3011 next was the secret uh, next was the token now token can be any string for our application so i am just entering a random string so all these three properties are required to establish a connection with our provider next we will be creating resource that is an object for that we'll first enter the resource keyword and then you remember app item that we had discussed in resource map i'll show you where it was in provider.go we had used app item and that will be calling resource enter the name that we'll be using right now 
here i have app item and i will give a name to this object that is specific to this project only it will not get reflected in the application anyway so i can simply give it as item 1 and i'll enter the pra parameters that are required to create an item the first one was name i'll give the name as item 1 and i'll give the description as a new item using Terraform and was tags. So how tags I'll giving? I'll simply give it as a string array of strings. So T1, T2. Okay. So this was the one resource that we created, and we can create multiple resources here i'll have to change the name here though and you remember that we had force new for name property so that is why we cannot use the same name again and we will have to change it though description and tags can be repeated after this is done the commands that we will be using here the one first will be terraform init what terraform init will do is it will initialize the provider for the application that is it will check whether all the code that is given in the provider is correct or not once that is done you can use terraform plan to actually view the entire plan that is what is to be done to get this particular configuration in our infrastructure or application so it will show you what objects will be created what objects will undergo an update or what will be deleted once that is done, I can do apply. That is, yeah, I approve this uh, configuration. Go and apply to it the real world. Once Terraform apply is successful, you will have all those resources created into your application. Now, suppose these two resources are created. And what I'll do is, I'll change the description here. I'll say Anisha. Okay. So what Terraform will do here, detect that this object was already created, but a one property has changed. That means it will call update function. So that is the beauty of Terraform that it itself decides which function is to be called, whether it's create, update or delete. Now, after all of these, suppose I remove this entire block, it will check that, okay, I had created one object item too, but it's nowhere here in the configuration means I have to remove it from the real world also. That, that is the place when delete function would be called. So that's it from my side. And these are some of the important resources that will be helpful for you to develop a provider. The first two are basically from the Terraform official documentation. The first link will show you a list of Terraform providers that are already published. The second link will be for writing a custom provider where they get to a great depth on what and how to be done along with examples for writing resources. And the third one is the GitHub profile of all the Terraform providers. Feel free to copy paste, okay? And uh, Terraform, looking at other providers, basically of uh, cloud provider services like AWS or Azure or GS, GCP, even GitHub has their own Terraform providers. All of the code are available in this repository and you can look through it and uh, learn how to write a provider. So I am done here. I'm open for question and answers now. Yes, uh, I can surely share the links. Give me a moment. I'll paste it in the com uh, chat section. Here are the links to various resources. Any questions? Yes, sure. 
i'll uh, quickly show you what all providers are available so the question was uh, can it can we use terraform for ibm cloud mm. if you go to the first link that i had shared you will see a list of uh, providers that are published out there hope you can see my screen here that is terraform docs provider index.html here you will see there are n number of providers here i guess it's more than 100 so you can definitely go and look forward and uh, providers are there and coming to I ibm cloud you can definitely create terraform provider for actually anything i've simply created a provider for an application that has only one object i'm pretty sure you can uh, develop it for ibm cloud or any other applications if you go and search in github for terraform providers you will even find providers for to-do list applications yeah i hope uh, i answered your question do you have beginner tutorial for terraform that we can follow through See, the main motive for myself to conduct this workshop was I, when I was developer provider, I did not uh, find enough resources. And the official documentations were my only help. And obviously, I followed some of the codes that were already written for some of the existing providers mainly AWS and GCP. But those are very complicated. If you want a simple one, look into terraform provider github a provider for github.com it's very easy and very simple to understand it, so terraform providers basically performs crud operations just that it, its writing style is different and the way it handles stuff is different it resolves the cross references it uh, decides a graph and how objects are created and what is the dependency between objects all those are very uh, plainly handled by Terraform provider. Plus, it has an option of parallelism. So suppose you have 11 objects that are independent. It can create all the 11 objects in one go. So it creates and triggers the API calls in one go. I guess the maximum that you can go is 11. And uh, you can decrease it or set it to one. Say you don't want parallelism. The very uh, varying aspects of Terraform provider that you can explore. And the best thing that I can suggest you is the docs that Terraform HashiCorp provides. They are very simple to understand. So you can consider that as a beginner tutorial. So I'll just scroll through the chat and see if there were any questions. Okay. So I see there are no more questions. Thank you for attending my workshop. I really hope that you will be connecting with me to discuss more. And I'll be glad if you want to actually discuss more about Terraform providers. And maybe we can help you with uh, developing a provider for your own that's all thank you and i wanted to just say thank you to you anisha for uh giving your presentation today great workshop also thank you to all of our attendees today uh you all have been connecting through the chat and asking great questions we're so happy that you're here with us today um and everyone uh just take time to keep connecting and making those connections and reach out to everyone that you'd like to meet here today um and just enjoy the rest of the day thank you again